Hey, it's Michelle, your CSC Biology Tutor. Welcome back to the Know the Differences series in which I go through with you important terms that you need to understand. In this video, I'll be looking at cell division and we'll be focusing on mitosis and meiosis. So you're going to see the differences between these two types of cell division. All right, let's begin with mitosis. Now, mitosis is that cell division which involves a parent cell, one parent cell, dividing to form two daughter cells. So the key points to remember about mitosis is that it occurs in non-reproductive cells. So these are all the cells in our body which are not involved in sexual reproduction. So these include every single cell except for the sperm and the egg, which are the gametes. So always remember that mitosis produces non-reproductive cells. The second point to remember is that mitosis maintains the diploid chromosome number and that is denoted by 2n. So the diploid number in humans is 46. So that means that every body cell has in 46 chromosomes. So that's a complete set of chromosomes that you should have. And these chromosomes exist in pairs, one from the father, one from the mother. So mitosis always maintains that diploid chromosome number. The third point to remember is that mitosis always produces two genetically identical daughter cells, meaning that the daughter cells all look exactly alike and they look exactly like the parents, the parent cells. So everybody are clones, they are all clones. So two genetically identical daughter cells. So parent cell looks like the daughter cell, so they all look alike. So then that leads to the final point, which is that mitosis does not produce any type of variation at all. There is no genetic variation with this type of cell division. So as you can see in the diagram, you can see the different stages that occur in mitosis. So we have prophase, so here you're seeing that the chromosomes have already replicated. So the chromosome exists as two strands with the centromere in the center. And then the second stage will where the chromosomes will line up at the middle of the cell. The third stage, anaphase, is where the chromosomes are now going to split. So you have the chromosomes splitting into separate sister chromatids and moving to opposite ends of the cell. And then the final stage would when be the when the two daughter cells would be formed. So you have the nucleus reforming and then you have two separate daughter cells forming. So that concludes the process of mitosis. So one parent cell at the beginning dividing to form two daughter cells. So what I'm going to do now is to go on to look at the role of mitosis. And there are three major roles that mitosis have. So let's look at the first one. So mitosis plays a major role in growth. Cells divide by mitosis to increase in size and mass of organisms. So this would include embryo development. So this is where a fertilized egg known as a zygote would go undergo a series of mitotic division, mitotic cell divisions to produce the embryo. And that embryo is going to eventually turn into the fetus, which is a young baby. So mitosis occurs through that process and also in general growth from childhood to adulthood. We started off as a baby, we went into being a toddler, then a child, then adolescence, then adulthood. So we see how there's an increase in height and weight throughout those times in our life. And then thirdly, they also occurs in plants. So just like animals, mitosis can occur in plants where you would produce that root growth and also the shoot growth, which is the stem and the leaves. So mitosis is very important in growth. All right, let's look at the second role of mitosis which would be in the formation and repair of tissues. Now cells divide by mitosis to form new tissues and replace old, damaged or dead ones. So these specialized cells need to be multiplied. And specialized cells are any cells that have a particular function in the body. So remember, a group of cells with a particular function forms a tissue. 
So we have skin cells forming, skin tissue, the blood cells form, the blood, and the muscle cells form, the muscle. These are just a few examples. So these specialized cells need to be able to be multiplied. So in the case where these cells grow old or they become damaged, worn out, and they eventually die, we need new cells to replace these old ones. So these specialized cells need to undergo mitosis to form new cells identical to the old cells. So a common example is after getting cut. The skin needs to repair itself. And you want that new skin coming up to be pretty much identical to the old skin that would have been damaged. So this is why mitosis is very, very important. So important in formation and repair of tissues. And then the third rule would be in asexual reproduction. So this is where offspring are produced from a single parent without the formation of any gametes. So this usually occurs in microorganisms such as bacteria, and it can also occur in certain plants via vegetative propagation. So that pretty much means that you have new plants farming from the outgrowth of parent plant. So that parent plant, you have these different outgrowths coming from the plant to farm new offspring. All right, let's move on to look at meiosis. Now meiosis is a cell division in which one parent cell will undergo two rounds of division to form four daughter cells at the end. So the key points to remember about meiosis, the first main point, meiosis produces only reproductive cells. So meiosis produces set cells, also known as gametes. So these are the egg and the sperm. So that's the only time that meiosis really occurs is to produce these reproductive cells. The next point is that meiosis will produce cells with the haploid chromosome number. So that's denoted by N and that is 23 in humans. So the cells that are produced by meiosis, as I said, the gametes, each gamete would have in 23 chromosomes. So that is half the full set of chromosomes. So half the diploid chromosome number. So that's what haploid means, half. So meiosis always produces cells that are haploid in number, in the chromosome number. And then the last two points, meiosis will produce four genetically different daughter cells. And as a result, that is how genetic variation can come about. So you would notice that there are two rounds of cell division in meiosis, as you can see in the diagram. So the first round typically would have crossing over where you have the exchange of genetic information between the pairs of homologous chromosomes. So that brings about differences. So that first meiosis, in meiosis one, you will produce the differences and the chromosome number would be halved as well. And then those two cells will then further go on to divide to form two more each, giving you the full four daughter cells, which are all genetically different to each other and to the parent cell. So why does meiosis occur? As I mentioned earlier, meiosis occurs in to produce the gametes. So it's important in sexual reproduction. So the cells divide by meiosis to form gametes in the sexual organs. So in humans, that would, meiosis would occur in the testes of the males and the ovaries of the females. So we know the sperm are manufactured in the testes and the eggs are manufactured in the ovaries. And then in terms of flowering plants, sexual reproduction, um, meiosis would occur in the anther, that's the male part of the flower, and the ovary in the female part of the flower. So the pollen consists of the male gametes while the ovule within the ovary consists of the female gametes. So that is really the only purpose of meiosis in sexual reproduction, to produce those gametes with half the chromosome number. All right, so I hope you have a better understanding now of the differences between mitosis and meiosis.